From the time I got into retro computers, about 5 to 6 years ago, I realized that 486 CPU era is a landmark for most of the retro PC enthusiasts. I haven't lived the time of home computers and early PCs. There wasn't any computer in my house before 1998. My perspective is from magazines of the era and some memories from older friends. A little older cousin had an Atari 520ST and still many kids talked about the legendary Amiga. As a child I was only familiar with the consoles, especially the 16-bit ones. All these things were very expensive, considering the average income of our country, and of course it was a luxury to have a computer only for playing games. Back then many gamers found out that it was the time to leave aside their beloved Amiga 500. PC had the graphics, the sound and new multimedia capabilities. Pseudo 3D games and interactive CD-ROM based games came to blow the minds of gamers. No doubt the consoles had their own thrills and technical achievements. Polygon 3D graphics and revolutionary methods for rendering 3D style sprites. But PC could attract the adult gamers and people who need a computer for their jobs. So, I was very keen on 486 computers. Some of the top PC games are from this period. Then I started to have a secret yearning to build one. Although there were so many things I ignored. I was sailing in uncharted waters. Didn't I know any DOS command or what memory management is. Additionally, parts for a PC like this are far too expensive nowadays. Nevertheless, I kept my eyes open and in a few years I managed to find an almost complete Visa Local Bus system. I also found a case with a rocker switch and the LCD screen as well, all very close to what I have imagined in the first place and without to cost me a fortune. Time to start our build. In this case, we have a Visa Local Bus mainboard, the Genoa 486 VLG X4. The chipset is the SIS 85C471, which is very popular and considered high performance. 256 kilobytes of case RAM installed on the motherboard and 16 megabytes of IDO RAM. Our CPU is an AMD 486DX4 at 100 megahertz. Genoa was a computer manufacturer which was founded in 1984 in San Jose of California. It was active until 1999 and it was producing primarily graphics adapters. Our graphics accelerator card is the Diamond Stealth 64 VLB. There are many variations of this model. Mine is the one with a DRAM. It has 2 MB of RAM and the S3 Trio 64 chip. Its performance is very decent in DOS and Windows as well. I had to choose a sound card between three options. First, we have the Boca Research 16-bit. It's an impressive full-size card because it is also a modem. It may have a real OPL3 chip, but I don't like how it sounds. I could say that it's very noisy, at least the one I own. Our second candidate is the ESS Audio Drive ES1688F. Very decent sound. Enhanced FM synthesis sometimes and minimal noise. And the winner for this build is the Optai 82C931. Optai FM synthesis is something new for me. Let's see how crappy can be. Of course we need an input-output controller card for an old system like this. I think that a, a 5 and a quarter floppy disk drive is almost obligatory for a build like this. A year 1993 TKFD55 GFR drive came with a case. We have also a 3.5 inch floppy disk drive from Samsung. A not period correct quantum fireball from the late 90s will be the storage device. 
the CD-ROM drive will be any white drive that happens to be fully operational. The computer's case was originally from a 386 system. Luckily, it has a 3-digit LCD turbo screen. I won't mess with turbo switch this time. I only gonna set the screen to 100. I'm going to use a new CPU cooler for less noise. The motherboard tray is heavy and firm. The power supply unit is old and noisy. Some cleaning and lubrication in the fan made things better. It has instructions for connecting the cables with a push and the rocker switch as well. Time to connect the ribbon cables. Some cable management is always nice.
the 486DX processor sticker is essential. Let's turn on the machine. I managed to write my own startup menu with great help from this website. And Phil's Computer Lab website is also precious in many ways. Let's run Doom Time Demo to see if the system performs as it should. Now we are going to test the sound card. Let's hear how accurate is the OPL3 clone chip. Ok, it's a console port, but many of you might have great memories of this game. Full motion video playback was a big thing back then. Unless you had a capable PC, you should be an early adopter of a 32-bit console.
Descent was a demanding PC game of the time. It may be the first real 3D title which allowed you to move in every direction. Our system's performance is quite decent. <laughs> 